Pluggability refers to the ability for an application or a script to run plugins. Within Arsenal, we don't actually use the term plugin. Instead, we refer to our plugins as modes. And there are two types of modes. Matrix modes, which determine the functionality of a button matrix, and encoder modes, which determine the functionality of encoders. And when I say encoders, I mean encoders, knobs, faders, basically anything that isn't a button or a switch. So let's take a look at how this works. Here I'm using Arsenal LPP, which is the Arsenal Powered Control Surface script for the Launchpad Pro. By default, this works in much the same way as the Launchpad Pro script that's included with Live. So you'll have access to the same seven main matrix modes. You've got Session, Note, Device, User, Volume, Pan, and Sends. The significant difference here, though, is that unlike the Launchpad Pro Control Surface script that's included with Live, in the Arsenal version, these modes actually aren't part of the script. They're simply the modes that the script is running right now. And that's determined by the settings in a simple text file. Here you can see the modes that the script is set up to run. So the first mode is Session. The second is LPP Note, which is short for the Launchpad Pro's internal note mode. The third is device mode, etc. And we can change all of this. Let me give you a couple examples. Let's say I'd like to have a note mode that has a bit more live specific functionality, such as note repeat and a proper layout for playing slices in Simpler. We have a matrix mode called note mode that does exactly that. So we can purchase that mode, install it, and then use it in our scripts. To do that, I'll simply change LPP note to just note. And then for that change to take effect, I'll need to load a new set or reload the current set. And now you can see when I press the note button, I have the classic isomorphic layout. If I switch to a track that contains a drum rack, I'll have the drum rack layout. And finally, if I switch to a track with simpler and slicing mode, I'll have the simpler layout. And in all of these layouts, I have note repeat functionality. So making just one minor change to a text file results in a significant change in terms of the functionality of the script. Let's look at another example. Let's say I have no use for volume mode. Well, let's replace that with a mode that I might be able to make use of such as our XY mode, which sets up the matrix as an XY pad for controlling two parameters. And now, when I press the volume button, I'm in XY mode. It's really that simple. Encoder modes work in much the same way. Here we see the default mode set up for Arsenal AP2, which is the Arsenal powered control surface script for the APC20. And just like we saw in the previous example, we can change this to suit our needs. So for the eighth mode, I'll specify device, which will allow me to control device parameters. Encoder modes are slightly different because some controllers have more than one set of encoders. For example, the Launch Control XL has four sets of encoders. In cases like that, each set of encoders has its own mode settings, and this allows for a great deal of flexibility. The core functionality of a mode is going to work the same in any given Arsenal Power Control Surface script, but it may look a bit different and have some additional functionality depending on which script it's running in. This is possible because modes are dynamic. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we have Arsenal LPP for the Launchpad Pro, and it's running Session Mode, a mode for launching clips and scenes. The controller has RGB LEDs, so Session Mode makes use of those. In this way, the LEDs can reflect clip and scene colors. Here's that same mode running in Arsenal LP1 for the Launchpad Classic, S, and Mini. These controllers just have tri-colored LEDs, and so the mode uses fixed LED colors. Sticking with Session Mode, here's another example. The Launchpad Pro has four additional modifiers, Delete, Quantize, Duplicate, and Double. Modes can use those modifiers if they need to and if they're present. So in Session Mode, we can use these to quantize clips, double the length of MIDI clips, delete clips and scenes, and duplicate clips and scenes. Buttons that are used for selecting modes have dual functionality. If you press them quickly, you'll latch into a mode, and if you hold them down, you'll have momentary access to a mode. To give you an example of how this is useful, right now I'm in note mode. Let's say I need to launch a clip. I can hold down the session button, launch the clip that I want, release the session button, and I'll be back in note mode. So this dual functionality allows for a smoother workflow. It also allows for the creation of modes that don't necessarily make sense in a latching context. Here I'm in session mode where I can launch clips, and now I can momentarily switch into session duplicate mode, duplicate a clip, and then switch right back to session mode to continue launching clips.